Your Holinesses, Most Venerables, Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Namaste. It is an honor for me to deliver an address on the occasion of Dhamma Chakka Day in the virtual presences of Most Respected Honorable the President, the Prime Minister, and the Ministers of the Republic of India, the Most Venerated Mahasangha, and other distinguished participants and speakers from friendly countries. This opportunity to partake in such a significant event that is held at the Presidential Palace of India is truly an exceptional one. Cambodia's shared culture, religion, history, trade, and people-to-people -people relations with India has existed for over a millennium. This has made both countries and people the oldest and closest friends as well as long-term partners. Allow me to also express my sincere gratitude to Venerable Dr. Dhamma Pia, Secretary General of the International Buddhist Confederation, for inviting me to speak today at this sacred day of all followers of Buddha Dhamma around the world. I congratulate the IBC and its leadership for the wonderful organizations of this event especially during these unprecedented and difficult times. Your efforts must be commended, not only for being a commemoration of the historical events during Buddha's first sermon, but especially because it is a timely call for Buddhist wisdom and values in responses to the fundamental questions and needs of the current global crisis. Buddhism has always had a prominent place in the ancient and contemporary history of my country. Cambodian society continues to be largely Buddhist with Buddhism constitutionally the religion of the state. The Kingdom of Cambodia is ready to make further contributions to the noble cause of Buddhism in promoting humanism and global cooperation in order to better respond to the crisis that our world is facing. Your Holinesses, Most Venerables, Excellencies, for thousands of years, humankind has made considerable progress, yet much of, of this progress has been contradictory in terms of human affairs. We humans, have also made matters worse both by what we have done through economy, technology, religion, and by what we have failed to do for the sustainable ecosystems and against the existential risks of humanity. We live today in an age where values and ideologies we once thought were irreversible have proven to be otherwise. What is happening now resembles a new world disorder with almost no remedy in sight. A rivalry between great powers returns with unprecedented spectres of war haunting this already troubled world. The threats of COVID contamination, cyberspace, and technological disruptions continue to grow, as do violence, racism, poverty, hunger, and systemic destructions of the planet. At the national level, domestic political consequences of slowing growth compromise peace, prosperity, and freedom. Our failures today are the consequences of our model of development, which is based on rampant consumptions, frantic pursuit, and accumulations of wealth and power, desires, and pleasures. These have been responsible for today's global upheaval. We thus need to think seriously and urgently on this vital issue. This flaw in development that has caused a harmful imbalance of growth to the detriment of civilizations. Otherwise, development itself will have no value or meaning. Humanity will continue living an uncertain existence and face the same problems, 
using the same systems, methods, and thoughts to solve them, and only being content with what is available as short-term solutions. Your Holinesses, Most Venerables, Excellencies, commemorating Dhamma Chakra Day today plays a role in helping the world recognize that a Buddhist diagnosis of humanity's predicament is fundamentally correct and that its prescription is contemporary, appropriate, and urgently important for the world in Desiree. As Buddha said, life is dukkha, suffering or pain, which are about unfulfilled desire or unsatisfactoriness, which is a question of passions and emotions. Therefore, the crises we are faced with are not simply economical, ecological, or technological. They are first and foremost the crisis of and caused by or wishful thinking, uncontrolled passions and emotion, and excessive desire. The crises are thus philosophical and psychological and must be solved respectively to the very nature of the causes. It is the Four Noble Truths that brought the enlightened Buddha to realize that all is impermanence and that the impermanence that feeds desire is the main cause of suffering and pain. The origin of dukkha is thirst, that is desire, and the means of removing it is the noble Eightfold Path. There is nothing born or conditioned that is not subject to the Four Nobles' Truth. These truths can guide humans through their world at all times and in all areas. If properly understood and applied, they can bring real positive change into our lives and thus the entire world order. World peace and prosperity cannot be ensured and sustained without this universal truth being properly observed as such, for our failure thus far, have been due to the lack of understanding of the reality of the problem and the origin of its cause. However, Buddhism cannot be an inspiring spiritual force for global peace and prosperity without all its Buddhist leaders and practitioners reaching a common devotion to preserve the origin Dhamma and to share the universal truth with all sentient beings and turn dukkha in the world, both individually and collectively, into sukkha. Buddhist concepts of compassion, voluntary simplicity, altruist motivations, and reduction of suffering, though constitute the heart of Buddhist practices and often studies in psychology, remains unfamiliar to economic knowledge as well as to the world of applied economy, which generally concerns itself with the pursuit of material wealth, comfort, and well-being. However, despite being two divergent topics, the economy and Buddhism have one important thing in common. They are designed to promote and achieve the human sukha or happiness. It is therefore imperative to study and promote the possibilities of reconciling happiness based on materialistic values of modern society with happiness based on Buddhist values. Dharma practice will help leaders, societies, and individuals reduce desire and calm the mind. It is in the teachings of the enlightened Buddha that rational and compassionate thoughts and actions may rest secured. The human Buddha, the society Sangha, are the triple gems must reconcile and converge in oneness. Your Holinesses, Most Venerables, Excellencies, I strongly believe that the successful commemoration of Dhamma Chakka Day today is an occasion to bring together and strengthen Buddhism in all its varying forms and traditions for the sake of more sustainable and peaceful world 
and for the serenity of humanity. In closing my speech, may I pray to the Buddha for the good health and longevity and success of all the distinguished participants, speakers, and organizers of this event, and for the continued success of the International Buddhist Confederation in carrying out noble and altruistic contribution to the propagation of the teaching of Buddha. For unity among all Buddhist traditions, as well as for peaceful and harmonious world. May the Lord Buddha bless our beautiful world with longevity, health, and happiness. My best wishes to the internal friendship between our respective countries and people of India and Cambodia. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Yours in Dhamma.